short uh, class today because the proofs quiz is a short quiz, right? But there will be questions similar to these on the final, so I want to make sure that everybody's ready to go, okay? I'm not going to put a full proof on the final and say, tell me what each step is or something like that. That's for future class. We will be, if you, if you have people ask you about this class, one thing you can let them know is that proofs are going to be a bigger part of the class as we go forward. I've been talking to some of the CS instructors and they really want us to beef up a little bit on the uh, proof side. So that will be a little more uh, in that, more content in there as we go forward. You guys though are in the transition period. Last semester we didn't have a proof section. But we had it, we didn't really do anything with it. This, this semester we're starting with it. Okay. okay. So let's take a look at these questions and see if we've got the answers to them. So what is a theorem? Well, is it a proposition? Is any proposition a theorem? No. How about an argument? An if statement, or how about a proposition that is true? That's the answer. The definition of theorem is it's a proposition that has been proven true. Okay. That brings with it then the stipulation that it's proven true. If it's an argument that you happen to agree with, that doesn't make it a theorem, right? is this? Well, one of the things that I'll probably stress more, when we study sets next time, all sets, or all set operations like union, intersection, and so forth, are actually defined by logic. So we don't define them directly, we define them indirectly by something we already know, which is propositional logic. So when you look at x union y, what does that mean? It means the set of all z's such that z is an element of x or z is an element of y. It's defined by the or statement. But remember that I showed you the, the similarities between the u and the v, right? The upside down u and the upside down v, the intersection and the and statement. They all work the same. And that's because these operations are defined by their equivalent propositional logic operations. Okay. So this is a definition. So I was looking at this one earlier. I would probably change this question to a and B here because that little X kind of could be confusing. That's X cross Y. So if it's A cross B, that would be a little clearer. Okay. So what does this little X mean? Is it a multiplication of set A times set B? I didn't know what that would be, right? Because sets could be people or cars or things, right? How do you multiply things times things, right? So what it is, it's the set where it's a set of ordered pairs where the first member of the ordered pair comes from this one and the second member of the ordered pair comes from this one. Okay? And that's what X cross Y is. You'll, uh, you'll have those, you'll have that definition again when you go into data structures because there's times when you're going to merge two databases together and you take an element from database A and another element from database B and it becomes a pair, right? Student course they're taking this semester. Oh, yeah, your schedules, right? So that's an example of a cross product between two sets. 
right? So, it's false. It's not multiplication. It's a um, operation where we take first element from this set, second element from that set into ordered pairs. Okay? Any questions on that one? We want to be clear on that one because it does come up. <clears throat> Okay, now this one, I messed up the answer, so I made two answers correct. So that you wouldn't be hurt by my explaining it wrong or putting the wrong answer down. Um, if I start a proof, and here's what we're trying to prove, that A union B intersect C is a subset of A union B intersect A union C. So we're trying to show that this is a subset of this. How do we do that? Well, the first thing we want to do is let x be an element of A union B intersect C. What are we doing? We're picking an element. Now, why do we do that? <clears throat> well, if we go back to what I told you earlier, all of the operations in sets are defined by logic operations. So once I've done this, if x is an element of this, take the union part and define it. That means x is an element of A or x is an element of B intersect C, right? But if x is an element of B intersect C, that means x is an element of B and x is an element of C. And eventually then you come out with a statement, several statements down, where you're going to have um, x is an element of uh, A um, or B and C. Now you can use rules of logic because you can distribute this. So this is an x is an element of A or B and A or C. But what does that mean? Well now, X being an element of that, that means X is an element of A or B intersect A or C. And because of that, we can say X is an element of A uh, union B intersect, intersect A C. And that's what you were trying to prove. Okay, so that's how that proof would go. All right. Did everybody see that? Okay. So this is explained by pick an element. I had put definition as also a correct answer. It's not. The next statement down, which would have been this one, would have been definition. Okay, this would be definition. Then we would get into rules of, um, actually this would be, from here we go to here, this is going to be distributed property. Okay, and then on down. Okay. A successful proof can turn a conditional statement into a theorem. Well, that goes back to the definition of theorem, right? A theorem is a propositional statement that has been proven true. So the answer is yes. Okay. All right, any questions on proofs? okay on it? Okay. All right, this is really just a basic introduction to proofs, isn't it? So I didn't actually ask you to do a proof. But hopefully when you see proofs now, because you will see them in some of your courses going forward, you're going to remember, okay, I read it statement by statement, and each statement must be justified by some basic rule of proofs. And that's all it is. 
if you think back to proofs you did in, where'd you do proofs in high school? Geometry, exactly. Geometry is almost always done by proofs. How many did not like proofs in geometry? Be honest with me. Two, three, and the rest are sleeping because they stayed up too late last night. Mm -hmm. I actually like the proofs in geometry. Uh, actually like the proofs in geometry. You like the proofs in geometry. Yeah. Um, I did, okay? But it's very much a test of a mathematical mind, okay? And we don't have just mathematical minds in computing. We need talent of all sorts. If you were all math majors, I might be more concerned, but I am not concerned. This is the reason for this course rather than the discrete math course. Because the discrete math course is highly proof driven. Okay? And this is a realization that proofs are important but not the ultimate of discrete math. For us, it's understanding how sets relate to database, how logic relates to writing programs. All right? So that's the difference. Um, but uh, I do want you to be able to look at a proof in the future and say, well, wait a minute, this is just taking somebody's propositional statement and showing by the things that we have accepted from before why that is a theorem. It's provable. Does that make sense? That's all that proofs are really used for, it's to turn propositional statements into theorems. So a lot of times when you're in calculus, for instance, we call them theorems, don't we? Okay. Derivatives are uh, defined by a theorem. Right? It's a hard theorem, by the way. Okay. Now, that finishes up then all of the topics. So does anybody have questions on any topic that we've covered that you're going to need to do the final. Anybody? Because the final comes up next week, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, remember what I said last time. Make sure you take the final one time before class. Now, if you want to take it before the Wednesday class, that's fine. Or you want to take it before the Monday class, that's even better, right? Because what I'm going to do is respond to the questions you bring in. And all of the above is not acceptable. Okay? I always get that one eventually. So what you want to do is bring in specific questions from the final that are still bothering you. Because those are the questions, or that's the indication of a learning gap for you that we want to cover before the class is over. So what's the final really for? Well, obviously, from your standpoint, it's for grade, but it's more than that. Use it as your tool to say, have I really mastered everything we've done in this course? Because you're going to need it in future courses as you go up through your majors. All right? Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So, anything to add for today? Okay. All right. Then, I guess we're done. Do we need a class on Friday? No. No? That's the first question you all have answered. <laughs> That's an easy one, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, uh, so let me know by email if you have any questions over what we've been doing. All right? Because that's my job is more fulfilling when I'm answering your questions because I'm helping you learn, right? So don't, don't have any problem with asking me questions. All right, so we won't have class on Friday. We'll call that a study day, right? In other words, go over what notes you've taken this week or the previous weeks. Look at the videos that are up. And I guess we won't have a video today because I forgot to start the camera. <laughs> so hopefully you've got this down, right? Um, on Friday, I have the other class. So I will remember to start the camera on Friday. That's what happens when you stay up till 3 o'clock in the morning, right? A couple of you guys did too. So um, I'll re try to remember that on Friday. And uh, I'll post it over the weekend so you'll have it. Okay? 
All right, then I guess we're done for the day. <laughs> okay.